is a quick tutorial on digital multimeters and just general usage and uh, just a few little tips on using this uh, this tool on your bench or around the house. This is a Fluke 15B digital auto ranging. It's a nice little multimeter. Best one I've ever owned. Has uh, four ports for your uh, leads. In this tutorial I'm just going to cover the few things that I do which is voltage, millivolts, continuity, ohms and diodes, amperage, and milliamps. If you don't already own a multimeter, definitely look into a digital that has a large nice display like this with auto range. The Fluke 15B comes with these uh, probes, also known as leads. I personally like these uh, smaller clip-on leads that allow you to clip onto wires for uh, measuring voltage or amps. And these are sold separately. The multimeter has four ports at the bottom that are used for different types of uh, testing. You need to plug, plug your leads into uh, the corresponding jack for the test that you're uh, working on. The uh, common ground is always common so you plug this black lead in and for the most part that lead always stays there unless you're changing the type of leads like I do between the probes and the little clippies but this will stay in this position most of the time. And selecting where your red lead goes determines on where the style is set and that is totally determined by the test that you want to do. So, for example, if you wanted to test voltage, you would turn the dial to the voltage selection and then plug your red lead into the voltage port. And if, say, you want to test amperage, you would turn the dial to amperage and then plug your red lead into the amperage port. And if you notice, the ports are labeled, so as long as uh, you have your red lead plugged into the corresponding label to what you have selected on the dial, you'll be able to get the reading that you're looking for. Many multimeters now have a function key like this one, the fluke, uh, the big yellow key is a function key. And uh, for the selections that have multiple tests, uh, like this one, you s make your selection and then you use the function key to select the sub-selection, like this. In this case, I'm setting up to do some continuity testing, so I'm plugging it into the jack for continuity. I'm selecting uh, the continuity selection on here, setting the function to continuity with the uh, little sound by it up there in the display. Here I'm touching the leads together, and you can hear the, the tests as I touch things that uh, are conductive. One, two, three block, or dipes, or a wire, even my ruler. And so all these things conduct. And you can see here I've got a trace here. If I'm going to test a trace on the circuit board, I can simply drop down, put my probes on there, and test it out. Testing voltage is uh, probably one of the primary things people use voltmeters for. Uh, these are batteries, and they all have a plus side and a negative side, as you can see. To test a battery is really simple. Sometimes they'll mark the positive side, and then your opposite side would be negative. Here I'm getting set up to test the voltage. I plug my probe into the voltage, select the voltage on the dial, and ensure that I'm on DC volts using the function key selector. I 
touch the positive and the negative probes to the positive and negative poles on the battery and get my reading. And do the same for any other battery I want to test. As long as I'm touching the red to the positive and the negative to the negative pole. A little guy too. Kind of hard to hold, but uh, still got a reading. Yeah, for the big guy, uh, little holes on the side. Uh, if you plug your leads in backwards, you'll just show an indication like this, a uh, negative voltage. But that's okay. It just means we have the leads backwards. Sometimes when you want to check something, these probes are a little bit too big or just can't hang on. You get the little clippies and you can clip them on easily. Here I'm testing the voltage on my bench power supply. Let's clip this onto my little leads here and uh, get my reading. Here I've got a test circuit with a 7805. And I'm just plugging this in. I'm going to do a test here and see what kind of reading I get off this uh, test board here I'm using this 7805. Plug in my bench power supply. Plug in my test leads and apply the power. There's this little switch and uh, get a reading for my 7805 that's in there. Now if I want to switch that out with the 7806, which is a 6 volt voltage regulator, I just uh, turn the power off. Plug this uh, 7806 in here. Do basically the same thing again, and uh, you may take a reading off here. Plug my leads, these little clippies, these things are great for a lot of the work that I do. Apply the power and get a 6 volt reading off my 7806. Here we're going to test some resistors. Uh, I'm going to set my multimeter up here. Turn the selection knob to ohm. Make sure my function key is set to ohm. Plug my test lead in to the ohm port. And testing resistors is uh, kind of cumbersome without the clippy things. You can do this fairly simple, really, if you uh, set it out on the bench. I use my clippies for this, though. Just clip it on either side of the resistor and uh, get a reading. This here is a uh, 470 ohm resistor. You'll want to test these in circuit. I can test this one because it's not actually plugged into anything, uh, but uh, generally you can't do that. So I dig through my parts here and grab another resistor here. Just plug it in. And this one looks like a 1.2k ohm resistor. This looks like a 10K ohm resistor. I'm going to set up here now and uh, test some amperage. I know that I'm testing milliamps, so I'm just going to plug in here to the milliamp port. But uh, if you're not sure of the amperage that you're going to be testing, just use the amperage port. I select uh, milliamp and uh, make sure that I'm on DC amperage. And just like with the resistor, you can't test uh, in circuit amperage, so you have to break the connection. And the way that you do this is you just uh, pull it apart. If you don't, you you try and do this in circuit, you don't get accurate readings, as you can see here. So what I do is uh, break the circuit, and it looks kind of like this. Uh, as long as you get your meter in between the uh, circuit uh, and you're in good shape. So what I'm doing here is I have a little test. I break the circuit and I'll plug the leads on either side here. Plug one lead onto the resistor and one lead onto the uh, LED. If I remember right I'm using a 5 volt power supply here. So I'll plug in a 470 ohm resistor here, and it gets 6 milliamps.
There's a 220 ohm resistor. So I'm getting lower here. You see the amperage milliamps move up. Let's get a 10 point milliamp reading. And here I drop in. I'm not quite sure what this resistor was. Uh, but uh, that's pushing the LED really hard there. You want to try and stick around 20 milliamps on an LED generally, unless they're rated higher than that. Testing a diode is pretty easy. Current only flows in one direction in a diode. It's indicated by the little wall. I call it a wall. It'll flow through that only one direction, and the wall side is the stopper. So where the line's at, it won't move through. So like in this, it won't move through this, pushing the positive, because it'll only move this direction. So I set up my multimeter, plug in my lead to the uh, diode jack, move the dial to uh, the, di uh, the uh, diode selector, and make sure my function's set for diode. And once I have the multimeter set up, then I can plug in the diode and run a test. Now I'll see uh, in this direction, as you can see, the, the wall side is on the negative side, so we see some uh, amperage going through there. Now if I turn it around, uh, I'll get a negative reading. This right here is a positive. So I'm rolling through the right way, but if I turn it around, I'll get a, a negative reading like this. So it shows zero. And going back to the positive side, it'll give me a positive reading. Diodes are really nice to protect your circuits with, and I'd suggest using them as much as you can. So, in this scenario, it certainly wouldn't pass through. And it reflects this with a negative reading. I hope you enjoyed this video on multimeters. Take care.